we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, good evening, my name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. Uh, I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the board, uh, Roger DuPont. Here. Uh, Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Present. Aaron Ford. Here. Uh, Stephen Revlack. Here. Sean O'Rourke. Here. Wonderful. Um, from the town, uh, Rick Valorelli. Here. And Vincent Lee. Here. Wonderful. Um, Council Council, uh, Paul Haverty. Here. Good to see you. And I think, I don't know if Martin Nover is on or not. She is the, the lead from Beta Group, but I don't think she's joining us this evening. Um, and then uh, for the applicant, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Stephanie Kiefer. Here. And John Hessian. I see John's picture here, so I know he's around. Yeah, he's on mute. <laughs> okay, it's a good evening. Uh, this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. The order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period indicated on the posted agenda. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom webinar app with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it is being broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means some attendees are participating by video conference. Other participants are participating by phone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name, or other identifier, and to take care not to share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Uh -huh public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. So the uh, turn to the administrative items on the agenda. Um, these agenda items relate to the operation of the board and as such they'll be conducted with limited input by the general public. The board will not take up any new business nor will they be the introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. Um, <clears throat> so we have before us is the approval for the meeting minutes from our October 27th, 2020 meeting. Um, and I believe Mr. Valerelli, you have some comments already from members of the board, is that correct? I do Mr. Chairman, I've already implemented them. We'll be getting a copy of the um, official minutes posted on Novus as soon as we get approval tonight. Okay, and <clears throat> I know the comments, I had sent in some comments, there were just a couple of uh, name misspellings um, and names entered incorrectly. Yes. Um, are there other questions or comments from the board in regards to the minutes? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Approved. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, do a quick roll call for <clears throat> approval. Mr. Revlak? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Yes. Mr. Mills? Yes. Mr. O'Rourke? Mr. O'Rourke? Aye, I'm sorry. Nope, <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Not DuPont? Aye. Mr. Ford? Yes. And Mr. Klein says votes aye. That's your unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Okay, so turning to the comprehensive permits section of the agenda. So 
Um, this evening, we had originally intended to begin again on the, the open public hearing in regards to Thorndike Place. Um, if you have checked the agenda, it was adjusted over the, um, on Friday and then uh, further documents were added over the weekend. Um, it was determined that the, um, so we had the new documentation that was to be received uh, by the applicant um, on November 3rd was received by the board on that date. And the information was transmitted to our consulting engineers beta group. Um, they were to have information back to the board by the state, uh, which we have received. Um, and those documents are on the, attached to the, the agenda on the town's website. Uh, we'll be voting to receive those documents this evening, but we will not be discussing them. Um, the reasoning for that is twofold. One is that um, we would like to have the Conservation Commission to have an opportunity to review those documents, and they will be doing so in an open session. Um, <clears throat> and I, I know their their chair is a, is on the call this evening. I believe the date and time for that will be December third at eight thirty p.m. Um, Ms. Chandler, can you coordinate that? Um, That's correct. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so that'll be the next opportunity to speak directly to um, to this item. The other reason for uh, postponing and our hearing until December 8th is that uh, the applicant had asked that they be able to have a, an opportunity to review the documentation from the um, consulting engineers before we resume the hearing. And so um, to accomplish both of those, we will not be uh, discussing the, um, the contents of the revised documentation. Uh, we will merely be um, acknowledging receipt of those documents. So the documentation that we received, the list is on the agenda under item number three, acceptance of new documents, which I will quickly bring up here. So that is this list, uh, which includes documents from the applicant. Um, it includes the review letter from our consulting engineer. It includes a comment letter, an initial comment letter from the Arlington Conservation Commission. And it includes um, some public comment that was received and so I ask if the board will move to um, accept these documents into the record. Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. I move that the previously mentioned documents should be entered into the record and will be made available on the board's website as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Chairman, I wondered um, if I could just sort of make clear that that uh, <clears throat> the rescheduling of this to the 8th is designed uh, principally to make sure that we have everything before us that we need to make this as, as successful a hearing as possible. Um, if we had had it tonight, the applicant would have had a very limited time to uh, respond to beta's comments. Uh, the applicant did have its comments in when they were supposed to, but it's a, it was a compressed schedule. And, and also the, we found that the uh, working session that with the Conservation Commission that we had last time was, uh, was extremely useful and uh, wanted to have enough time to, uh, uh, to put that in before we had the climactic hearing. So, uh, putting this off until the 8th means that instead of hearing this sort of in the middle of a process, we get to hear it after much of the preparatory work has been done. Uh, and that should make it more useful both for us and for the residents who uh, will want to talk to us about this then. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, one for the vote from the board, Mr. Revelak. Yes. Mr. Hanlon. Yes. 
Mr. Mills? Yes. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke? Yes. Thank you, Mr. DuPont? Yes. Mr. Ford? Yes. And the board votes, the chair votes aye. Thank you. That brings us to item number four on the agenda, which is the discussion of the schedule going forward. Um, up here on the screen in a second. So what we have here is a proposed schedule. Um, so tonight obviously is November 24th. Uh, we're meeting to accept new documentation and present a revised review schedule. Um, there are three different types of meetings that we are referencing um, on this agenda. One is uh, this conference call to discuss preparations. This is essentially um, a quick call between the applicant um, the chair and vice chair of the board, um, the town and council, and the um, <coughs> excuse me, the consulting engineer, just to confirm that um, everyone understands what will be presented at the following hearing, and that everyone is prepared for that hearing date. Uh, we do not discuss the merits of the application. We do not discuss the contents of the application. We merely discuss um, the preparations for the meeting. Um, so we'll be, that's what the conference calls are. Um, the December 3rd Conservation Commission working session, uh, which we discussed earlier, uh, is a public meeting that is held by one of the other um, uh, committees or commissions in town to discuss uh, the details of the project as it relates to their particular uh, uh, area of expertise. And so um, the December 3rd is a working session with the Conservation Commission and that has been confirmed. Uh, December 8th will be the next public hearing on the Thorndike Place um, application. We'll be discussing wetland and flood, the wetlands and floodplain submissions, reviews and comments. December 9th, um, there's a meeting scheduled for the Transportation Advisory Committee. We have um, notified them that we do have the traffic impact study, uh, the revision from the applicant, and um, if they would be willing to entertain a working session for that evening, uh, we would appreciate um, if, if they'd be able to do so. Uh, we have not heard back yet from them. Um, we only made that request yesterday, so we will wait on that hearing. Fifteenth uh, is just a conference ahead of the next hearing. The December twenty-second hearing date will be a continuation of the discussion about the wetlands and floodplains issues. Um, January fifth is another coordination call, conference coordination call. January twelfth, uh, we hope, will be the hearing to discuss the traffic impact study review and comments. Um, this of course is pending that we, uh, that the traffic, the transportation advisory committee has an opportunity ahead of that meeting um, to hold a public hearing. I'm gonna unmute myself again. Um, And that was, that's uh, January 12th. Uh, January 19th is another coordination call. The 26th is a hearing to discuss the architectural and urban design aspects of the project submission. Um, February 2nd is another confirmation call. And then February 9th would be a hearing to uh, continue discussions on the traffic impact study and urban design issues from the prior two meetings. Um, at present, the um, comprehensive permit applications have a 180 day uh, calendar associated with them to complete uh, all the hearings. Uh, that date is currently April 9th, so we're we're operating with a plenty of a cushion on the back end. Um, are there any questions or comments in regards to the proposed schedule from the board? 
Mr. Chairman, just a question about the uh, December 3rd meeting. In terms yes, of access to that meeting, what's the best way to view that? Is that Zoom with the Novus as well? Um, if uh, Could Ms. Chapnick comment on that, please? She's the chair of the Conservation Commission. Sure. Um, the um, the best way to comment, actually, if you want to make comments for that meeting, you can send comments to Emily Sullivan, who is the agent of the Conservation Commission um, prior to the meeting. You could also make comments at the meeting. We will allow, in our working sessions, we do allow public comment. We limit them to two to three minutes a person, depending upon how many people are there. However, we encourage people to actually comment directly to the ZBA because a working session is not a hearing. So it, it doesn't have any legal teeth. It's really meant as a free flow of information and questions, concerns, answers, um, if we can get them then. So we really discourage formal comments, though we will accept them. We discourage them at a working session because it's not part of the formal ZBA process. It's meant just to help move the process along and get all parties thinking in the same direction so that when the ZBA does have a hearing on this um, top on the wetlands, um, stormwater and floodplain, we will have hopefully addressed all the issues that we're concerned about. Thank you. Did that make it clear? Yeah. It does. And if people want to join the uh, join the meeting, um, they, where can they find the link for that? Okay, you should be able to find it. You'll be able to find it on the Conservation Commission webpage, and you you can register just like you register for a ZBA Zoom meeting. We have the same register procedure. Um, you have to pre-register. I will um, warn you that we also have a password protection for the Conservation Commission meetings. Um, so make sure that you notice that you can't just click and then they get put in the waiting room. There's a password you have to put into, which you will get when you register. All right, thank you very much. Any further questions from the board? Um, opening the question as well to Mr. Haverty, um, Ms. Kiefer or John Hessian, if you have any questions about that, about the calendar. I don't have any questions. All right, thank you. All right. Seeing none, I will go ahead and uh, if I could have a motion from the board to accept right. the schedule. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, yes, sir. I move that the Zoning Board of Appeals adopts the proposed schedule as presented in the November 22nd, 2020 memorandum as the schedule for public hearings moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. DuPont. Quick, quick roll call for votes. Um, Mr. Revelak. Yes. Mr. Hanlon. Yes. Mr. Mills. Yes. Mr. O'Rourke. Yes. Mr. Ford. Yes. Mr. Klein and Mr. DuPont. Yes. All right, thank you very much. That brings us on the agenda to item five, which is a discussion of the ZBA website revision. Um, and go to the screen. Okay, so I don't know if people are familiar with the current website uh, we have, um, which was sort of created quickly and out of necessity um, several years ago as a basic repository for the documents that we had received as a part of the 2016 application. Um, and subsequent to that, we have received new documentation. Uh, we have been adding it as we can to the website, but we haven't, we've never really established a, an overall format for it. Um, and a way to sort of ensure that people could find the documents they were looking for um, and to try to eliminate some confusion. And so I have been working um, with Vincent Lee um, 
and with uh, Joan Roman from the town and also with, uh, with Rick Valorelli to put together sort of a, a different format um, that we can have on our website, which we can use for this, but we can also use for subsequent um, comprehensive permit applications just to help sort of consolidate things. So uh, what will be this here, what you've seen this Word document is sort of essentially what it would be. Um, the name of the project, a brief summary, um, which we currently do not have of what the project is. And in this case, uh, because of the revision, we will have uh, uh, both parts of that in the summary, both the initial and the follow-up. Um, then we have the documents from the original application, uh, which was made in August of 2016. And currently the titles for all of the documents on the web page are just the file names. And so um, it's a little bit confusing to find out what they are. So trying to change the names so it um, there's a, a description of what the file actually is and then a, a date associated with that document. Um, and so this, that's what this is here for the original documents. And then uh, department comments related to the application um, those letters are here in sort of a digest format from that application. Um, and then just having a line and then the, the revised March 2020 application. So we'll have the transmittals. Um, for this particular, um, we're including the bylaws that were in effect at the time of the original application because those are the bylaws that govern this project. It is not the current copy of the bylaws that are in the t in town. Um, so those are referenced here. Um, we have the drawings and plans that were submitted. And we have the department comments. Um, and so these are the, the different uh, departments or boards that have submitted documentation relative to that. We would have consultant comments, um, both the from uh, legal and from uh, engineering. Then we have public comments. Um, currently, these are the documents that we've received in the past. Um, and I would like the board to um, discuss a little bit how we want to handle public comment, whether we, um, and so come back to that in a minute. Um, and then we would have a section for the September 2020 information we received. Um, and then with the same essential breakdown, and then again, the November documents um, that we have received uh, who it's from, what it is, what the date is, um, all the way through. And then as we receive department comments, uh, consultant comments and public comment to that. And then I have a section on uh, correspondence from the Board of Appeals. Um, and <clears throat> so that's the, the proposed uh, format that I've sort of worked out between my, um, with myself and uh, a lot of input from Mr. Hanlon. Um, in regards to the public comment, um, been working with uh, with Rick Valorelli to get all of that doc all that documentation correlated um, in a into a way into a format that we can uh, have it available on the website. Uh, my question for the board is: Do we want to have um, each piece of correspondence be its own separate entry, or do we would we want to have them sort of in a in a digest format um, related to the time they came in? And I had wanted to get the board's input on that question. Mr. Chairman, yes, please. Um, <clears throat> this is Pat. I I think that the uh, it, it, well, it's an interesting question because the, the ultimately the objective is it, is to make this as as user friendly as possible. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that if we try to do this as a digest, the digest itself will will change because things will get either be delayed in in getting everything to make sure that we have it in the in the proper order in chronological order, or alternatively, yeah, uh, we'll have to change it. Uh, from time to time, which would make it a little bit harder to use. The advantage of doing it in a digest form 
would be, I suppose that it would be easier for people to, uh, that it would be easier for people to do, if it's on a Word document or, or something that you can search, uh, it would be possible for the public to search through the documentation or easier for them to search through the documentation uh, because they could do a word search and find things that they're that they're looking for. Um, on the other hand, you would not you would have to actually get into the document in, to, in order to do any of that, and you wouldn't be able just to see what you're looking for by looking at the um, by looking at the the list on the website. Um, it seems to me that either way, it's important. Uh, for all of the entries to include the name of the commenter uh, and the date of the comment. Uh, and it seems to me that occasionally it would be useful when something is really focused on one or one particular set of issues like trans transportation or wetlands and flooding and so forth um, to note that. Uh, but I would not do that in every case because many of these comments will deal with more than one issue uh, and it would become administratively difficult to have to go through and make subjective judgments as to what each of those things are. So I would only do that in, under circumstances where the, the comment has some particular salience in one issue set and wouldn't feel strongly even about that. But I do think yeah, things like the way we have it now with the one comment is Mugar. Uh, and of course, that's all what we're dealing with in everything. And so that doesn't really tell anyone anything about what that comment is. It turns out to be a comment from Corey Beck Beckwith in July 25th, 2020 on a number of issues. and. Uh, you need to know the name and the date if you are really taking seriously finding the finding it and uh, and being able to to refer to it later on. The same thing is true of Mr. Seltzer's comments in in May. Um, so at least you need that much. Uh, I so I kind of you know I don't know whether I guess there's a third consideration and that's which is easier for staff to do because it's important to be able to get this done and get this up quickly. Uh, and uh, I'd like to sort of hear staff's recommendation as to whether, which way, uh, uh, which way to put it. I can easily see advantages both in the digest form and the other, and, and, and it may very well be that the, the decisive character thing is, is how easy it is to do one or the other. Um, Mr. Valarelli or Mr. Lee, um, I believe um, that changes to the website need to be done by Joan Roman's office. Is that correct? That's correct. It is, Christian. Um, there's certain ADA compliance issues that uh, um, she's authorized to make those changes right now. Um, so so for, for now, anyways, yes, it's, it's through Joan Roman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, please, Mr. Revelak. Yes, um, I have two comments on the uh, proposed redesign of the um, project's yeah. web page. So first, I, I think this is a, 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 this is a tremendous improve, this is a big improvement over what we have now and it's, um, you know, it's, it will be easier to find things if it's more organized. What, we might consider doing is breaking this up into four sections, the project summary, and then one section for each submittal, um, August 2016, March 2020, November 2020. I mean, we kind of have that, um, you know, we, it, what we're seeing kind of does that to, um, you know, to a certain extent. I would just, you know, think it might be worth considering putting one more you know, branch in the tree, just so to speak. Um, with respect to public comments, I agree with Mr. Hanlon in that, um, you know, having them available on the ZBA website is, is very important. I would, in, the ter in terms of digest versus individual comments, uh, I would, my own inclination would be to list them, you know, to make each 
individual comment a separate file. Uh, that way they're easy, easier to link to. Um, and once, you know, a, you know, someone sent in the correspondence and it's been uploaded, staff will not, uh, should not need to uh, change it, you know, at a later point in time. But, you know, I would defer to uh, Ms. Roman and uh, other town staff in that regard. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Just um, on your, on your first uh, your first comment, was it that you would consolidate, you sort of have a section at the top where it, we consolidate all of the, um, all the submitted materials by uh, sort of period of submission, and then we have all the comments thereafter, or I just wasn't quite sure what you were. So, yeah, so um, could you scroll up a little bit? Sure. So more thinking more con concretely, uh, you we have a pair of headings that say that refer to August two thousand sixteen. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'd have, you know, you basically these would, you know, drop the heading down a level and just have like August sixteenth submission. Um, and I would keep I would be inclined to keep comments together with the submittal package, uh, just so it's clear what they uh, were referring to. So you would just add essentially one tab to the left that would uh, sort of help to identify the, the the time period, the time frame essentially for, so that it would be, we would have one that would say August 2016, and then under that would be the application documents, and then there'd be a second one for March 2020, and it would have the application for under that. Right. Yeah, basically revision one, revision, iter iteration one, iteration two, and iteration three. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Relak. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing anything. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Dupont. Um, so if this is the only reference down in the revised March 2020 application, and then you have um, Arlington Town bylaws in effect at the time of the original application. Um, so is that the only reference to the bylaws which control in, in this? Yeah. Is that They're the it? only time they appear, yes. You know, the only thought I had, and I don't think it's a huge issue, is that when you say in effect at the time of the original application, I think we understand that that means that those are the ones which uh, we which control the application. But I wonder if it would make sense to also just add a small notation to that saying which, you know, are the applicable um, you know, the applicable bylaws for this. Because if people look at that, I think they can read it to say that there are other bylaws. And I wonder if they'll be, you know, think to direct themselves uh, to a newer set of bylaws. And I just thought maybe that that could clear up any question. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> Really, in, in there, are, once we once we think of all of this the way Mr. Revelak has set it out, and which is really sort of the organization that's already here, um, there are at least two things that that don't re relate to one iteration or another, and this is one of them because it relates not only to the revised March 2020 application but to all further revisions. Um, and the other has to do with the scheduling orders, which at, at this point, almost everything, which sort of, I mean, which would be arbitrary to break them up by iteration. Um, and I would suggest having an overall section, um, I'm not quite sure how it should be titled, but either at the beginning or at the end, um, that would include both of those things because they relate to the whole thing. I guess I'd sort of be inclined to put it at the beginning because that's the sort of thing that people would look at first, uh, especially I'm guessing that as many people will be consulting this on the schedule as, as any other substantive issue and it would be easier to find if it was in the beginning. 
but in any event, it should be all together in one place. And it seems logical under the same, for, in the same way to include <clears throat> the bylaws in effect at the time of the original application uh, in that place as, as, as well. There, there may be other things that emerge as we go forward that should be in a place like that, but, um, but that should be broken out separately. I'm just a concern that people will just not think to go look, happen to look at the March 2020 application to find the bylaws in effect because mm -hmm. by that time that'll be ancient history by the time you get to you know the next hearing. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any other questions or comments from the board? Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, please. I like Mr. Hanlon's idea. <laughs> <laughs> As do I. Um, just a, a question then for uh, for Paul Haverty, who's um, our counsel for Thorndike Place. Uh, just a question as to how other um, municipalities handle um, public comment and the uh, inclusion of them in the public record. Mr. Chairman, it, it really varies from board to board. Um, a lot of times what I will do when I draft a decision for a board is actually have a list of materials that have been submitted by the public during the course of the public hearing. Mm -hmm. And that list becomes an attachment to the decision for the board. And it also helps to identify what records are, are in the public record so that if anybody wants to actually review them, they can go to the town and and get copies of those documents. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question for Mr. Haverty, if, if, if I may. Yes, please. Um, a moment ago, we received a, a, a number of things into the public record. Um, suppose time were to go on and someone were to send us a letter and, and we, for some reason or other, didn't have it in a list of things that we, in some subsequent motion, um, admitted into the public record. In, in order to be in the public record, do we have to formally receive it? Or is it in the public record just because it was sent to us and is commenting on, on the application? It is in the public record as long as it was submitted to the board during the course of the public hearing. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you, Mr. Haverty. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Kiefer, do you have any um, questions in regards to the website that we're maintaining? Um, just a couple comments. Um, I, I do think this is much improved, and I, I very much appreciate um, an ability for every Boards, public applicants to to go and to um review that um and I I think as uh, Mr. Hamlin I think Mr. The, uh, the comment about um, either the note or moving on that up at the top, I think, just to avoid Oops. Did we lose Ms. Kiefer? I know her. And she's back, but her, her she's muted now. Oh, okay. Hi, sorry about that. That's okay, your voice was choppy okay. before, I hopefully it's all off. Okay. Can you hear me now? We well, can hear you, but it's a it's a little bit uh, a little bit stilted. Am I? Uh, oh, okay. For some reason, I'm getting a, a notice that the uh, the connection is wavering right now, so okay. I'm not certain. Um, it's much better right is now. Is that clearer? Much yeah. better right now. Yeah. Okay. Then I will speak quickly. Um, so I don't know if you caught my comment about the um, uh, um i agree with the suggestion 
question about moving the um, either the node or, and, and the reference as well as to the um, municipal bylaws in effect at the time of the original application to the provides clarity for everyone. And um, also, so just uh, um, how is presently proposed to um, uh, revise March 2020. Um, March 2020. So there's no few applications go forward. Whoops. Sorry, we lost you again. Did, did you lose me again? Yeah, I apologize for keep losing you. Okay, I'm sorry. I my video is off, but it seems like you can should still be able to hear me. Is that correct? We do hear you. Yes. In fact, we can hear you better with your video off. Okay. Well, if, if you don't mind, then I'll just continue um, that way. Um, so my other comment was just how you have it presently with the header of um, revised March 2020 application, perhaps not to call it a or um, just so it's clear that it's all the same application. Um, and I know that there's been revisions to the project design, but um, just a suggestion. So, if, so if, if subsequent to the initial application, one gets confused, okay. application. So if we refer to the original um, August 2016 app as the application and then others uh, subsequent to that, as we refer to them as submissions, that would be clearer? I think so. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Um, and, and again, I, I do appreciate this effort to um, update. Thank you. All right. So, any other questions from the from the board? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead. Um, I originally thought about taking a vote on this, but I think instead um, I will make some, I'll make the adjustments per the conversation we've had this evening. I'll redistribute that to the board. Um, and then uh, I don't think this is something that necessarily requires a public vote. So we'll, um, we'll take a look at it and then um, I will forward everything off to, uh, to Joan Roman. Um, and, uh, she anticipates she'll have some time probably in the next couple of weeks um, to take this on. So hopefully we can get that done in short order. Wonderful. So that was the last item on our agenda for this evening. Um, again, the next upper, the next um, times where Thorndike Place will be discussed um, it will be discussed on December 3rd at the Conservation Commission hearing, and then on December 8th at the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. And the, the schedule um, is currently in the agenda and uh, is also on our current website and hopefully will soon be on our new revamped website. So uh, Thank everyone for their participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting, especially wish to thank uh, Rick Valley and Vincent Lee for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record. Our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has questions or comments or recommendations, please send them via email to the board at zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. Uh, to conclude tonight's meeting, 
I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you all very Happy much. Thanksgiving. Really Good appreciate everybody. it. Happy holidays. Stay healthy, boys. You too. Take care, everyone. Bye.